I'm an advantage, uh, advantage of speaking at the end of the conference, and I've learned, uh, learned a lot. Thank you very much to the uh, organizer of this fascinating conference and to the previous speakers. What I'm going to present uh, now is a case study, but it shows us, as I mean, a quite different view. The fields of war is a space of struggle between the modernist and the traditionalist mode of architecture. The development of wartime te uh, time technology had a stimulating effect on architecture in Europe and the United States, as, uh, as we learned it already. The war was uh, leaving its traces not just in the shape of heavy monumental edifices, as you see it on your left, uh, it's uh, the German defense uh, wall in Bordeaux. It also stimulated to experiment in temporary and civil architecture, like the exhibition on American civil architecture in Grand Palais Paris uh, in uh, 46 show uh, uh, on the right. In analyzing wartime projects uh, and uh, theoretical concepts of the Soviet architect Andrei Burov, this paper uh, seeks to show a discrepancy between the technological achievement, pragmatic needs, and ideological task that was characteristic for the architecture in the late uh, Stalinism. Um, uh, in August 1943, Andrei Burov noted in his diary, I think that architects today are facing the task of constructing a better world. We need a new contemporary philosophy of architecture, drawing on modern materials and environments in which and from which works of art will be created and in which the human being will be situated. In August uh, 43, when it became clear that the Soviet army offensive that began began with the victory of Stalingrad would change the course of the war, the Committee of Ministers, Sovnarkom, passed a decision concerning the reconstruction of the national economy in areas liberated from the German occupation. In this framework, the architect's profession was of particular strategic importance. All the country's leading architects offered plans for rebuilding the destroyed cities. One of them was Andrei Burov. In his address at the plenum of the Architects' Union of 43, he called, however, for an immediate rejection of monumental forms of construction. Instead, he favored a complex of programs aiming at the development of small-story prefabricated houses based, as he said, on the experience of the USA and temporary dwellings. To this end, Burov recommended buying up entire factories in America which produced material for such buildings. Burov is one of the most controversial figures uh, in the history of Soviet architecture. He is best known as a proponent of the Stalinist uh, neoclassical style of residential and representative buildings that he designed in 1930s, which has come to be associated with socialist realism in architecture. But as I want to show here, Burov's work was in fact much more ambivalent in its attitude to the doctrines of socialist realism and to the classical past. Learning about those of his projects that remained unrealized, but that informed his theoretical views on, of architecture, we can also gain a more nuanced understanding of the Soviet architectural discourse. In particular, the importance of Americanism as a paradigm of Soviet projections of architecture in the future will be fleshed out. Andrei Burov uh, was born into a family of architects. After serving the Red Army, Burov entered the architecture faculty of Futemas, the Soviet equivalent of Bauhaus. Here he was taught by leading constructivists of the time, Alexander Vesnin and Moise Ginsburg. He also joined the Union of Contemporary Architects and co-founded the journal Contemporary Architecture. Burov's diploma was the design of a train station, you see it on the left. Uh, and his other early projects included a housing complex for workers at Ivano Voznesenska uh, on the right. Uh, both met much positive criticism in circles of constructivists. At the time, his work in theater design struck viewers with their originality. Uh, 
and uh, his uh, portrait of uh, Piminov shows Burov is a constructivist in, of his constructivist time. For Sergei Eisenstein film General Line or The Old and the New of 26, Burov projected an ideal kolkhoz, a design which Le Corbusier found of much interest. Despite the significant differences in some fundamental views on, of architecture, Burov and Corbusier would stay in touch four years after that you recognize the Corbusier on the left, in the middle is Sergei Eisenstein on the right, Burov. For uh, his work on a factory in Chelyabinsk, Burov uh, was asked to undertake a study visit to the Ford factory in Detroit, which he did in uh, 1930. The trip offered him insights in the American architecture and, as we see, also in the an American way of life. It's also Burov, <laughs> photo of the 30. At the beginning of the 30, um, he uh, became an active uh, critic of constructivism. He joined the School of Advanced Study, founded in 33 by the All Russian Academy of Architecture, whose goal was the creation of a socialist architecture in correspondence with the central tenets of socialist realism. And this is the first example uh, of this build. It's uh, the first build uh, uh, example of, of such arch retrospective architecture, residential building on Mohavaya Street, Moscow. After the war, it was a residence of the American embassy, and after that, a residential house, and I was born in this house. <laughs> my, my view on the Kreml is uh, so through the windows of this neo-Palladian architecture. The architect was the neo-Palladianist uh, Ivan Joltovsky, in whose studio Burov worked. Burov also joined a tour of Europe by a, a group of architects who were supposed to become acquainted with the classical heritage of the West. And uh, the pattern of, for, for this architecture was Loggia dei Capitani of, of Palladio. It's, it's quite a copy of it. Uh, Burov's most lasting image in the history of Soviet architecture was above all as the author of classical parade-style Stalinist buildings. The examples are the House of the Workers of Nakom Les on Gorky st Street uh, on, the, on the right, and here uh, above it's, it's Burov with, uh, uh, with an artist, Vladimir Pavorsky, who did the design for uh, this house. Uh, he designed also the neo-Renaissance facade of the House of the Architects and the neo-Russian designs of the interiors of the historical museums of Moscow. But there were also other buildings which are set apart from this series. Most of them remained at the design stage. One of Burov's non-Stalinist buildings is the extravagant prefabricated panel house, the so-called laced house on Leningradsky Prospect in Moscow co-authored by Blochin, which was completed at the beginning of the war. This plan took the constructivist ideal of a house commune as uh, its foundation, but fused it with the achievement in domestic comfort that Burov had seen in modern American hotels. Some other of Burov's design of, his, of these natures um, remained unfinished project, while Burov himself an architect who did not fit the Soviet framework was soon forced to withdraw more and more from active architectural life. What remained of his legacy invited scholars to create the image of the double-faced Burov, a hidden constructivist and hypocritical Stalinist in one person. At the same time, Burov began to develop his talent as prodigious inventor. One of his creations was the so-called anisotropic material materials made out of glass wool blended with synthetic resin, materials used to create panels for prefabricated constructions. They were incomparably light and sturdy. Burov also uh, invented uh, an apparatus for curing cancerous tumors with, uh, with ultrasound and panoramic cinema. For such inventions, uh, Burov gained the doctorate of physics and mathematics and was given his own research laboratory, as you can see, in, he, him in his laboratory, he's on the left, um, during the war. Uh, 
and it was uh, located in a former church in Moscow. You can see uh, so the, <laughs> the, the the form of the architecture, and he designed the uh, uh, the inside of, of the lab, uh, lab himself. Wolf called himself jokingly a micro Leonardo, but far from Michelangelo. He was just as talented as a teacher and theoretician of architecture, drawing on his wide humanistic knowledge and his smooth original prose. Finally, Burov was also a dandy and a gentleman. He loved cars, having learned how to drive in America. One of his many projects was the design of the Soviet victory car, Pobeda. In Moscow, uh, Burov struck his contemporary with his un-Soviet elegance, uh, judging uh, from description of his students, particularly female admirers, Burov hardly fits into an image of Soviet society in the decades close to the war. As I want uh, to argue, Burov's position as an artist in sincerely following the line of Soviet architect uh, architecture of so uh, socialist realism changed decisively in the course of uh, World War II. The changes, both in technology and theory of urban planning, were deeply connected with the challenge of the war. It was at this time that uh, he came to reject the pseudo-Renaissance retrospectivism of the Stalinist uh, style, whose main protagonist was Ivan Jaltovsky, whom he called a Renaissance master of the 15th century who lives in our time. At this time, Burov was working on his own architectural theory based on the principles of tectonics, which he rooted in Greek antiquity, European Gothic architecture, as well as medieval Armenian architecture and modern industrial architecture of the West. He summarized his idea in the book In Search of Unity, which he completed in 44. He is the book and it, it, it was issued later, 20 years uh, later. The war, which according to official Soviet statistics, destroyed over 1,700 cities and settlements and left 25 million people without a roof over their heads, appeared to Burov as a rare chance to begin anew, to consider the mistakes both of the constructivist and the academic past of Soviet architecture. There was an opportunity to construct not just individual buildings, but whole cities. This view was firstly connected with an understanding of the role of new technology in construction. Secondly, with a perspective on the cities viewing urban, urban spaces from the air. It was a topic of, of, uh, of, of some uh, presentation uh, yesterday. Uh, and finally, with a new understanding of strategy of urban planning. What was called for was, according to Burov, not a compact, vertical, and tightly built up city, a type of urban planning that turned out, uh, out to be very vulnerable, vulnerable to attacks from the air, but rather a horizontally spread urban structure strongly connected with the natural landscape. This paradigm shift was generally also in keeping with the Russian architectural tradition, but other, under uh, modern condition it came with its uh, own challenges, such as the requirement for new solution in transport communication, the car. Burov um, himself demonstrated his newly found principles in the project for reconstruction of the Black Sea Resort Yalta on the Crimean Peninsula, which had taken heavy blows during the war. Uh, although one could say that in his designs for Yalta, Burov was inspired by the old small story houses that had been typical for the sea resort, and the, whole, uh, the project incorporated his ideas of the city of the future in the manner of the constructivist garden cities. The new post-war cities had, according to Burov, to be part of the natural environment. Nature and the city had to mutually permeate each other. This had to do with his understanding of architecture as a plastic form uniting tectonics and aesthetics. At the same time, both architecture and urban planning had to emerge through an interaction between the architect and the engineer, if possible represented in the person of an architect like himself, a type of Leonardo. This new architecture had to take consideration of all the development in technology accomplished during the war. This view was polemically directed against, as he called it, 
the picturesque architecture, architecture of his time, which ignored the architectonic aspects uh, of construction. That's why for him, the second important factor of contemporary urban planning was solving the issue of public transportation. And Burov took the English city of Plymouth and wartime US transport causeways as his examples. It's an example from his uh, book um, uh, on architecture. According to Burov, Yalta should be mainly composed of small story typified prefabricated buildings. The sanatorium and hotel complexes with five towers were to be situated in the landscape of parks and gardens, with each of these buildings placed at some distance from each other. His plan for the two-tier urban freeway, leaving the ground level free for pedestrian, was particularly innovative. Um, the main chaussee stretching across the seashore was to be laid underground in a tunnel. Thus, the city was freed from traffic. The tunnel wall was interrupted uh, in even periods with large illuminators opening to views uh, of the seas. The mild climate, climate along with year-round greenery and a landscape similar to the Mediterranean, all this made uh, Crimea, with uh, its air of classical antiquity and Yalta particularly, an example of the ideal ancient polis. He envisioned the city center as an agora, a square lead in marble with glass shopping windows sparkling in golden frames, a space for civic and cultural life. Despite the visionary character of this project, which is somewhat reminiscent of the Quattrocento Vedutas, Butov, uh, Burov in fact offered an uh, altogether new solution for problems of modern transportation. In a comparative perspective, we should consider, for instance, for instance the uh, catastrophic consequences of contemporary projects elsewhere, such as the uh, Rue du Soleil in France, projected to pass through the very uh, center of Lyon. Burov's small story buildings were also composed of new light uh, materials called swam, invented by himself, and promised levels of comfort unusual for Soviet buildings of this time. Uh, Burov's wartime projects, as uh, Jean-Louis Coin rightly remarked, were uh, integrally connected with a new wave of interest in American architecture, which grew in the Soviet Union of the years 43 and 44. In this period, architects like, like Andrei Bunin or theoreticians like Roman Higa were interested not in skyscrapers, but rather in one-story America or typified small-scale residential housing. In this connection, one should note it's the most immediate example for the resort city of Yalta, which was Miami Beach, the American uh, sea resort beautifully situated in the maritime landscape. Or, as Burov put it in his uh, diary, um, a skyscraper born out of the contradictions of the city and for the city, just as his contemporary, the automobile, both uh, have found their measure and degree of humanity by coming out to nature and uniting with it, wrote Burov in, in his uh, impressions of Miami. Among uh, the illustration in his book on architecture of 44, Burov said also um, aerial photographs of New York with Central Park framed by skyscrapers that almost organically grow around it along with illustration of, of ancient and medieval architecture. Writing in wartime Moscow, Burov took the United States that he had seen in his constructivist years as his example for the interaction between the automobile and the city. America's horizontal, rather than vertical urban planning, was his primary interest. Automobiles and roads, America, he wrote, brought man closer to nature. In America, technology, without losing its face, entered the service of the lyrical principles. The central element in uh, Burroughs' architecture of the wartime years was the home, or the family's heart. To understand why it was so important, we should have a broad idea of the housing situation in the USSR. The problem of housing, particularly for workers, was a central worry of Soviet economy, which had emerged even before the war with the exploitation of the new land and the growing urbanization of the country. The construction of residential build, uh, housing lagged behind the fast tempo of industrialization. 
Thus, workers were mainly based in temporary buildings of two types, uh, dormitories and barracks. Often they lacked water or sewage provision, as well as gas lines and electricity. Such crowded and unhygienic living conditions determined the everyday of Soviet people for many decades. But the situation was aggravated much more during and immediately after the war, when millions of people were left homeless. By contrast to officially praised models, according to Burov, the main element of the constructed cities was to be a small story house for one family. He took two examples for his ideas. The first was a house at Pompeii, distinguished by its simple plan and expressing an ideal synthesis of architecture and fine art. The second example was a one-story American residential home, such as that of the architect Albert Kahn, which Burov saw in Detroit. This new principle of construction depended on a highly resistant carcass and a light thermomaterial air conditioning system built in furniture, maybe a glass wall made of an insulated material breaking light, which allowed living in unity with nature while being protected from the climate. Family uh, living in such houses required an automobile that was to connect people with the trading and administrative centers where they worked. Burov's Yalta project was judged by the authority as formalistic and disregarding real circumstances and rejected. The development of Soviet architecture took an entirely different direction in the war and post-war period. The destructions of the war uh, made room for a reconstruction of representative centers in large cities across the Soviet Union. You see here the Khrushchev uh, Street, the main street in, in Kiev, reconstructed by, by uh, an architect, uh, chief architect of Kiev, Alexander Vlasov. Uh, um, former constructivist. The edifice um, in a new classicist outfit with elements of a national style were designed exclusively for government buildings and the Soviet elite. Such elements of Americanism, as mentioned earlier, eventually fed in the development of high rises. According to official statistics, cities um, that had been destroyed were reconstructed within 10 years. However, in this process, the need of the majority of population were still practically ignored. They continued living in overcrowded communal apartments or, or in houses in the suburbs lacking infrastructure. The majority lived in barracks. I showed you two examples. Uh, the barrack has to be regarded as necessary addition to Stalinist architecture. It was the main architectural unit of the socialist era from the end of the 40s and surviving to the present. In this sphere, Burov also offered innovative solutions. He projected light prefab living units made of armored plaster. Yes, this one. Again, um, for temporary housing, very, very similar to a package uh, house uh, you know, of, of Gropius, which could be easily deconstructed and reassembled in a new location. This was um, inspired by his studies of the wartime technology developed and built uh, mobile hangars in Britain, for example. Uh, technical problems were also at the heart of Burov's pro strange project for a museum, museum in Stalingrad, of Stalingrad's defense, uh, with parabolic foldable constructions, uh, as you see uh, here, and the Temple of Glory shaped like a pyramid, and uh, it, it, it has a, a big similarity of, uh, uh, of, of the, the project, um, uh, of, how, how was the name, Sak uh, Sakakura, uh, yes, uh, in, in Japan. Uh, it was an attempt uh, to, to introduce in, uh, a new paradigm into Soviet architecture in uh, Asiatic, uh, Asian paradi par par paradigm, but also reminiscent of uh, Corbusier Musée Mondial, uh, maybe also of the visionary architecture of Claude Nicolas Ledoux, which were well uh, known in Russia and particularly popular in the early Soviet period. At the same time, uh, yes, Burov was not uh, the only architect uh, to, yes, uh, there are two uh, 
two examples from the book on architecture uh, of uh, Burov with, uh, with, with this new constru construction of wood uh, and uh, to compare it uh, with, with his uh, uh, Temple of Glory. Burov was not the only architect to work on Soviet models of prefab panel uh, houses for a new type of living, attempts at which had been made even before the war. But none of them had as innovative and radically new solutions of the technical problems of uh, this branch of construction as Burov. This only became a key task of architecture in the Khrushchev period, when luxury in architecture was explicitly condemned. This new paradigm of Soviet, uh, Soviet houses, housing produced the shabby buildings known as uh, Khrushchev, which, however, gave home to many millions of uh, people. Burov's book on architectural theory, which he completed in 44, was only printed in the tour period in 60. He did not leave uh, to uh, see it in print, and indeed none of Burov's wartime projects was eventually realized. Why? Uh, there are several reasons. One of it was Burov's openly uh, ne negative attitude to the classicist Stalinist architecture when he began to endorse more strongly during, which he began to endorse more strongly during the war. His wit and the sharpness of his judgments likewise it did not help his career. Uh, secondly, notwithstanding his critical assaults, uh, the relationship with constructivism was unclear to contemporaries. It is for this reason that in the smashing articles against architects deemed to be nonconformist, many target Burov spe specifically. He was not, not alone as a target. Uh, uh, there were also other architects such as Vlasov, uh, the chief architect of Kiev, I show you, and Nikolai Koli, uh, who de delivered a, pro a project of the uh, reconstruction of Tver in neoclassical uh, uh, style and built the center of Minsk in Baroque. But Burov's visionary projects, uh, though orienting themselves on Greek antiquity, still revealed their relations with the constructive union of contemporary architects, which by this time has long ceased to exist. And finally, Although Burov calls others to follow Russian traditions, his only positive historical example was old Russian architecture. His other examples are Western, and apart from antiquity and Gothic architecture are based on his experience of transport networks in Britain and United States. At the time of heightened Russian centuries, at the end of the war, this book was read as a provocation and alone offered enough uh, grounds for Soviet officials to accuse Burov of submissiveness before the West and to enforce his withdrawal from active construction project. Architects are the doctors of the human soul, Burov said, paraphrasing the socialist formulate of the writer as an engineer of the human soul. His medical metaphor referred to the destructive impact of the war. Burov's naive belief in the curing, uh, curing force of uh, architecture was born out of the utopian project of early Soviet time, with its faith in architecture's mission to save humanity. In this light, the war which brought so much destruction now appeared to him to offer a unique sh a chance to realize his ideal. Soviet officials, however, decisively rejected this radical thought. It simply did not conform to the general line of triumphal architecture of the post-war period. Thus, uh, the rejection of Burov's project was made on ground of ideological and aesthetical principles, uh, rather than pragmatism. Thank you very much.